LasVegasDiscount.net's the best there is. Save up to 50% on your next Vegas trip. And travel, rental, shows, and tours. Find the deals you're looking for. LasVegasDiscount.net. LasVegasDiscount.net. If you're going to Vegas for deals that are the best, visit LasVegasDiscount.net. Radio.com with Andrew and Lee talking boxing, combat, sports, comedy, football, and everything kick ass. All on FightNetRadio.com. Fight Net Radio. Hola, soy Julio Cesar Chavez. And lights out, baby. Lights out all day. This is Sugar Ray Leonard, and you listen to Fight Net Radio. I mean, this is ridiculous. It's a radio show. It ain't a one-hour television spectacular. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. We gonna know. I got eyes and ears everywhere. I got friends all over the world, man. Who gives a shit with Whitey? He's a piece of crap. G'day, Fight Net Radio fans. This is your wonder from down under, an international sweet science correspondent, Sam Navajiro from the Exceptional People podcast. This week, I cover a couple of Fight Net Radio's scraping the bottom of the barrel events from both Mexico City and Baltimore, USA. First up, hola from the Blackberry Auditorium in Mexico City. This bout was proudly brought to you by LasVegasDiscount.net and Telemundo. In a bout that was billed the much-awaited and highly anticipated, unfortunately did not eventuate as the original challenger Edson Ramirez withdrew a few days before the fight. When fight night arrived, WBC Latino welterweight champion Maurizio Trompas Pintor made very light work of late replacement Miguel Angel Martinez scoring a second round TKO. Referee Lupe Garcia waved it off at a time of 1 minute and 22 seconds. Over to Baltimore in the US of A and proudly brought to you by LasVegasDiscount.net and Showtime. In this second and final installment of FightNet Radio scraping the bottom of the barrel weekend, the semi-main event of the evening featured a couple of the fight game's veteran journeyman, Cuba's Yuri Orikis, El Chiclon del Guantanamo Gamboa, and Roman Rocky Martinez. Both fighters came into their lightweight clash hoping to get the victory and maybe even secure a shot at a big fight later this year, and that is exactly what happened. In the first squash match of the evening, the 37-year Gamboa knocked down the 36-year-old Martinez twice in the second, eventually knocking him out. The winner and now 31-2 and Yuri Orkis Gamboa immediately called out Javonta Davis. In the main event of the evening, and finally, for this scraping the bottom of the barrel weekend, Javonta Tank Davis did what was expected in the second squash match, pleasing his fans in his homecoming title defense against mandatory challenger Ricardo Nunes, stopping the Panamanian underdog in the second round. The undefeated Tank Davis, 22-0 with 21 KO, smashed Nunes with a great left hand in the second, hurting the challenger. Nunes managed to stay up as Davis threw shots against the ropes and referee Harvey Doc jumped in to call a halt to the fight. The referee post-fight said that Nunes got hit with a couple of big shots. He saw he was defenseless so he stopped the fight. For the heavily favoured Davis, the victory was expected and we look forward to some serious challenges later this year and beyond. Post-fight, Davis, the WBA Super World Super Featherweight Champ, called out fellow 130 pound and IBF World Super Featherweight Champ, Tevin Farmer who was fighting at the same time in Texas. Javonta says that's the fight he wants next, 
naming nobody else. His media-shy promoter Floyd Money Mayweather was full of praise for Davis after the victory too. Mayweather called Tank unbelievable, something special, a pay-per-view star, charismatic with the will to win, with big things in store for the WBA Super World Super Featherweight Champ. That's it from me. This is Sam Navajiro, Fight Net Radio Southern Hemisphere and European Sweet Science correspondent and number one casual fan. For more of my gold, look for my Exceptional People podcast on iTunes or visit exceptionalpeople.com.au for past episodes. Bye for now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fight Net Radio. My name is Bob. I've been asked to do the intro to this show. Good morning, Andrew. How are you today? You're a writer and an analyst. I'm reading the script Lee gave me. <laughs> Very nice. How's it going? Yes, sir. It's going really well. Did you watch the card last night? We'll start right off. <laughs> Screw it, talking yeah. about this fight net radio thing. Let's just jump right in, Andrew. How great am I? Week after week, bringing quality entertainment to the masses. You know, Andrew, when I was growing up on the streets of Flatbush, in the streets of New York, as a young lad, Watching the Irish war with the police, I think it was something like 1914. I don't know. I lose track. Uh, I was thinking, you know, I want to be a promoter of fighters. And when I think back, how brilliant I am. By the way, this isn't my fight, Andrew. It's a DAZN card. Oh, yeah. No, DAZN. Tell me before we started this show that this was my fight. (laughs) I'm so confused by you. It was a unification, correct? So they were both but champions. Ramirez, Ramirez yeah. yeah, Ramirez is a top rank fighter. He is? Yes. I signed a, a Hispanic fighter to, after the Oscar incident. To now you're scaring me. So, <laughs> now you're scaring me, Bob. So I'm going to make sure that Ramirez didn't sign with Matchroom, but no, he was a top rank. Remember, this is the guy that sells out Fresno, dude. Him and Andy, yeah, him and Andy Ruiz. They used to do cards down there in Fresno. You talk hella shit about Bob, then you found out he was selling out that place. <laughs> no kidding. Well, as you know, I've been holed up uh, in Las Vegas with the uh, ring card girls, getting ready for uh, next week. I'm sure I have some Japanese fighter somewhere. I only sign Japanese fighters right now, Andrew. I'm really. Do you have proof? Do you have a copy of this contract? You don't even remember who you're signing, huh? You know, we're we're so important here. Yeah, Andrew. he's with top rank. He's with top rank. Stop it. No. Yeah, keep Go going. On. Come on, Bob. You're losing it, Bob. You're scaring me over here. Uh. Okay. I'll oh, take my fuck. medication. Yeah, we better, we better do it. You better take a time out. Here you play off for Bob. More importantly, <laughs> uh, it was a pretty good fight based on what I read about it and saw in the highlights. Was I Where's ringside? The... Oh, shit. I fucking don't know. Did you see if I was drinking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, it's a good fight. Um, it's going to be, they, they have a candidate fight of the year. Lee, I don't really like saying that when it only went six rounds. It was a good fight. Like, I don't even know if Hooker gets a rematch because it only went six rounds. Uh, it was entertaining. He should get a shot. He's definitely going to be back. He almost had Ramirez hurt uh, a few times. I love how Dazen was saying... Um, I, I don't think he hurt him, but he stunned him. Do you, do you know what that means, Lee? Uh, no, Andrew. Please continue. <laughs> I, stun, hurt. What, what are we doing there? You're fucking morons. Those guys are all morons, but whatever. Um, Not giving credit where credit was due sometimes. Way, way over playing hookers. Uh, boxing. He should have boxed a lot more. Uh, he started playing Ramirez's game. He tried to go to the ropes and, and fight on the inside, and it was just a matter of time. Um, he landed good shots, but Ramirez is one of the best body punchers, uh, combination punchers, power punchers in the junior welterweight division. This kid has so many titles going for him right now in the junior welterweight division. Hooker had no business there. Stay on the outside. Stay behind the jab. 
try not to get hit to the body. It was a great knockout. Um, you know, he got him to the ropes, forgot about the jab, went right hand, left hook about, I don't know, six times, seven times. <laughs> Referee did a great stoppage, Lee. Might have been one step too late. You know, could have got in there uh, one punch earlier, but whatever. Can't, can't knock him too bad. It's a deadly knockout, though. It's going to go for knockout of the year. Um, Ramirez moves on. He's got two straps now. And he moves on in this division. I, I think he is the draw of the junior welterweight division. Look, I like Regis Progre too, but the kid's not making that big of a splash like Ramirez is. Um, Mikey Garcia is going to start looking at this guy. Adrian Broner is coming back to this division. I know we all hate Broner, but that's a great fight for Ramirez. A great fight to get him into his first top-ranked pay-per-view, pro possibly with a good undercard. I think Bob would try to pull that off. Um, and Ramirez is the real deal. The, the kid's action. Um, he's a fan favorite, right? He, he's got a following in, in Fresno. I think that's going to grow throughout all of California, through all of the, the Mexican communities. Once they really start seeing him and what he stands for does not seem fake at all. So that was the first thing I liked about Ramirez. So I think he'd, Nothing but an upside for him. Uh, last night was a great win. Watched a fight. Uh, Hooker was undefeated. or both undefeated champions. Ramirez got him out of there with the six-round stoppage. And for the record, lest anyone think that I don't think that Bob thought that that was actually a <clears throat> top-ranked fighter, here's the official top-ranked press release that I read before we started the fight. Thank God. Mission accomplished, Andrew. Thank Would you God. like it in the voice of Bob? <laughs> <laughs> You're scaring me, dude. You have me looking up shit on Google. I was like, what the fuck? Oh, no. I, I was <laughs> correct on this one. All right, there you go. Hold on. So everybody can see it. Mission accomplished. Nice. Jose Ramirez, the undefeated World Boxing Council champion, arrived in enemy territory, Andrew, with the objective of adding the World Boxing Organization title to his collection. Guess what, Andrew? He did it. Ramirez of Avenal, California. You know where that is? It's the armpit of Central California. It's actually lower than Stockton, Andrew. Blasted <laughs> yeah. the end. It's hard to do this. <clears throat> Blasted the then undefeated champion Mauricio Hooker with a stoppage at 148 of the sixth round in the unification class that took place at College Park Center. Now Ramirez sets his sights on unifying all the belts at 140. Can you believe that, Andrew? Here's a quote. I am ready to face everyone in the 140 pound division, said Ramirez. Every time I trust more and more in my abilities, I just, I just took the title from a great undefeated champion. I was determined to get out there and here are two of the world titles and I did it. I'm awesome. Just ask me. I wanna face the best fighters in the division and won all the titles. That is my goal. It's harder work than it looks. I, I recommend to everybody, rough your voice up. Give it a whirl. Give it a try. See how it goes. See if you enjoy it. It's difficult work. There you go, Andrew. Progress, we Progress is in the, the World Boxing Series right now, so I don't see him fighting Ramirez anytime soon. Um, you know, a lot of these other, maybe a Jorge Linares, he's a veteran out there. They could get a title defense with him. He's a name. Or I think they Jorge start Pires? leaning. I didn't know he was still fighting. Or <laughs> or I think they lean towards Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner gets some of the most views off of the PBC. We all know it seems like all these PBC guys are jumping ship now. Uh, there's rumors out there that Gary Russell Jr. is about to sign with um, Matchroom. That Dazen, I don't know if everyone was paying attention, but I'm going to link up how Farmer already knew about Davis. That's because they weren't watching ringside. They're talking before the fight. So, no, there's things happening. There's obviously things happening with the PBC, but you guys see these guys are, are moving away from this company really fast. Almost so fastly, I don't know what's going to be left for them to actually sell. But we'll we'll see how that plays out. I'm not I'm not behind closed doors either. 
There you go. Uh, hi, everybody. Welcome to Fight Net Radio. Lehana Chandra Labache, now that I'm not Bob, uh, bringing you the uh, uh, wonderful world of boxing as I'm completely amused by ourselves. Uh, we talk about boxing. Andrew is a writer. I am an observationalist. That's my new title, Andrew, observationalist. So uh, we covered that fight at the top. I just wanted to cover this right now. So I screwed up. We have an international reporter, Sam Navajero, who we have cover fights that Andrew and I wouldn't normally watch so that we have a more well-rounded show. And he does a great three-minute recap for all of us. That's what you heard at the top. I'm doing this now because I screwed up the next story, Andrew, because I thought you got rid of Showtime. You got rid of HBO. My bad. Uh, because last night, Gervonta Davis and uh, and Tevin Farmer both fought. So let's start with uh, Tevin Farmer. Uh, Tevin Farmer uh, uh, out of Philadelphia, outboxed. Uh, what is his name? Gelman Frenois. Ooh, I'm sure it's Frenois. Yeah, it's pretty from good. From France. Yeah, yeah, nice job on my part, right? Yes. Uh, takes a 12-round decision. Disappointingly so, Frenois does nothing to correct the vision of Tevin Farmer, You're and he is still stupid. staring in two different directions, Andrew. <laughs> uh, what did you think of the You're Tevin Farmer dick. performance? <laughs> Farmer is getting better. Um, the confidence of being a champion, I think, is making him better in the gym. It's showing in the ring. Yesterday, the head movement, uh, you know, ring generalship. Uh, com- it just, he's just, he's getting there. Listen, you can say all you want. We could make fun of him all you want about the his eye situation. Uh, it's not affecting his defense. Um, I don't know, you know, like I said, I don't I don't even want to take that any farther, but he deserves it. The guy's had 22 uh, wins in a row now. He's the IBF champ. It's time for them to step up. Davis, Burchill, whoever wants to step up to this to the plate. Um, Tevin Farmer's here and he's real now. Yet yeah, last night was a great. Might have been the opponent. Don't get me wrong. Not too many killers coming. Uh, out of France, right? You know, you don't see those guys making big waves in the boxing world too much. So it could have been the opponent, but he looked really good last night. After the fight, <clears throat> you see what what was strange about this, you guys. And I'm gonna jump to the Tank Davis fight real fast after this, Lee. After this fight on Dazen, the Dazen reporter told Tevin Farmer, Gervonta Davis just called you out on Showtime. What is your response? I find that I found that real weird. I, I didn't think, you know, Dazen just doesn't seem like the company that's watching Showtime to see if if Gervonta Davis was about to uh, talk about Tevin Farmer. It just doesn't seem like that that went on there. I think they've already talked to Floyd Mayweather and Gervonta Davis is, is about to announce signing with um, Dazen. And that's why Dazen brought up his name to Tevin Farmer, which Tevin Farmer said he would fight him, but uh, doesn't believe that Floyd Mayweather really wants to fight. That's basically what he said. I think he said his his higher bosses or whatever don't want it, but we know who he's talking about. Because Floyd has, has publicly came out and said he thought Davis was too young and wanted to wait. We all know how how Floyd you know plays his, his big matchups. Uh, if he's younger than them, they're waiting. Shit. Which takes us to the then in question fighter, which I set up this whole segment for, Gervonta Davis. Yes, sir. Gervonta Davis, the guy who has made a career about being on the undercard of all Floyd Mayweather fights, <laughs> now working hand in hand with Floyd and being, as he puts it, his marquee fighter, depending on the day, because uh, last week wasn't uh, Manny Pacquiao his uh, headline fighter? Wasn't that what he was implying? Yes. Well, he's his boss. He was telling everyone he was Manny's boss. So, yes, you are correct. Uh, Gervonta Davis, WBA super featherweight champ, 
uh, Trevante Davis, TKO's Nunez in two whole rounds, which is two rounds too long for this fight. The unbeaten <laughs> two-time WBA super featherweight champion Trevante Tank Davis now improves his record to 22-0 with 21 KOs, scored an explosive TKO of mandatory challenger Ricardo Nunez. That doesn't sound fixed at all for a guy who started off the evening at 21-2 and with 19 KOs, now finishes the evening at 21-3 and on Saturday night in front of what they report as 14,686 fans, Andrew, at Royal Farms Arena. Let's and be it honest. it looked like it. It looked it like it. Four thousand. You think oh, so? Stop. We say it did. It, it, it did. Around the arena, movie style. <laughs> All right. What did we learn from Gervonta and his scrubbly doubly opponent? Uh, he can knock you out at any moment. We kind of already knew that. Yeah, he just, you know, helped to remind us. Um, this was a good fight for when it la- how long it lasted. Look at. This Nunez kid had two losses coming in, but really he had only been beaten once. That was four uh, four years ago. His first loss is a DQ. So, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, so you take away the DQ. He was 21, 1, and 19 going into the ring that night. That's a decent record. And when you watched him fight the first round, at least, and probably going into the second, his ego is what got him knocked out. His confidence is what got him knocked out. Uh, he's going to watch the tapes. He's going to see what he did wrong and, and hopefully fix that because he was doing good, Lee. Um, he had, a, he had, he was landing punches. He was taking Davis's shots and it seemed like he was, he was not in control, but he was so confident that he like looks to the crowd as they're breaking up. He's like looking to the crowd like this whole, yeah, I got this kind of attitude and boom, left hook. If you watch the replay, it, it You know, everyone's been calling Davis a little Mike Tyson. This is probably the first replay you could put with Mike Tyson, and they kind of look the same. His face expression, the hook, everything about it. Um, (laughs) Nunez's head, I think, goes about three feet over the ropes. I don't know how it didn't come off of his shoulders. He was hurt bad. He was hurt bad. Davis throws another combination, misses like two, but lands two in the last one. Sends the kid's head over the ropes again. Like the kid could not take a punch. His neck strength wasn't there. The head was was looking at the lights every time Davis landed a major punch and the referee had to jump in. I had no um, no issue with the stoppage. The kid's head looked at the lights twice. His hands dropped on one of them. You got to jump in to save that. There, there's no reason to take another punch. So... A, right away, showtime. Oh, this this was too fast. I didn't think so at all. Davis then calls out Farmer. A straight call out. I want Farmer. I've been saying it. Yada, yada, yada. Will it happen? Who knows? The name that no one's saying is Miguel Burchill, and it's just a shame. Miguel Burchill sitting there, I believe, 36 and 1, 32 knockouts, something like that. Probably the most feared fighter, not only in that division, but all of boxing right now. They just don't want to talk about this young man from Mexico. Um, but so Davis Farmer, hopefully gets made under the Dazen banner. There you go. Yes, sir. Uh, everybody take an opportunity to go to fightnetradio.com. Fightnetradio.com. Uh, support our sponsors, lasvegasdiscount.net, uh, Airbnb, 55, whatever. Whatever you've heard on the show, go ahead and sponsor it. We appreciate it. You can also buy shirts. Fightnet Radio gear at fightnetradio.com. We appreciate all of you for keeping up on the stuff that we're doing. Follow us on Facebook. That is our number one location. Let's start right off with today's news clips. And we're inching closer to a featured story that I'm horribly excited about. But let's continue with the Dillian White situation. As many of you know, a couple of weeks ago, an anonymous report, which has not been verified by any source whatsoever, <laughs> other than Deontay uh, Wilder, uh, Dillian White tested dirty for a substance. Nobody's identified the substance. Nobody's seen a report. Nobody has a blood sample. 
Uh, we move forward to now an updated Eddie Hearn comment from yesterday. Promoter Eddie Hearn talked in detail about reports of the WBC interim heavyweight champion Dilly White and allegations of failed drug test on Saturday night's DAZN stream. Uh, here is what he had to say. There is an ongoing issue, which is confidential between White and UCOD. Uh, board, which you will soon hear about very soon. A lot of facts that have been reported aren't true. But there was a hearing before that fight where they heard all the evidence and cleared Dillian White to box in that event. Uh, it's catch-22. After the event, very easy to say yes, but what are you, oh, uh, on whether Rivas camp should have been informed of this situation. It's catch-22. After the event, it's very easy to say yes, but what are you going to do when a fighter's cleared? Tell the opponent there was a hearing, the fighter's cleared, and it's okay. Uh, one, that's messing with his head. Two, it gives him grounds for the event to start talking about the guy who had a hearing and was cleared from the hearing. So I get the comments in that respect. But as far as I'm concerned, legally, in terms of the route that was taken, he had a hearing, he was cleared, he was licensed, and the commission took place. What happens from here, I guess, there is some uncertainty, but Dillian White, he's guilty until proven innocent in this case, especially with social media these days. So we'll see how it plays out. He's now working very hard with his lawyers to clear his name pre-bout hearing evidence given, cleared by UCAD, uh, by the commission, no reason he shouldn't fight in that respect. You'll never make your own mind up uh, as the evidence. You'll make your own mind up as the evidence unfolds. All right, Andrew. I'll say this again. Deontay Wilder, potential opponents that he, I, I'm going to say, doesn't want to fight. Uh, test dirty, allegedly. There's a hearing. He's cleared. Somehow, my guess, allegedly, Deontay Wilder and his camp get their hands on it. Of course, they run town on social media or the PBC in general and their social media team. Or, God forbid, it's, you know, Steven Espinosa and his crew. Whatever the case. Uh, Dillian White is, I, I agree with Eddie Hearn. He's guilty until proven innocent. What is your opinion on this? Especially because this is his second dirty test. Dillian White was suspended already in the sport of boxing in 2014 for testing positive. Um, look, he was cleared. So I don't believe Dillian White's the future of the UK boxing scene. So I don't see Eddie Hearn or the board. Look, people don't even want to fight this guy. One, Anthony Joshua has got his hands tied with Andy Ruiz. Two, Anthony Joshua already beat Dillian White. Wilder don't want to fight Dillian White. So why would anyone be fixing this for Dillian White to come out with the clean slate? We also seen Jarrell Miller get right over his drug test in one one what uh one fight. Now he's he was uh in negotiations to fight possibly Tyson Fury, which hasn't panned out quite yet, but his name was in the running just the very next uh opponent. So I don't see anyone fixing this for Dillian White. He was cleared for a reason. Something happened here. I don't know what it is. Like like Hearn says, the evidence will come out, and that's we'll give our judgment. I don't believe anybody would have allowed him to fight thinking he was a dirty fighter. Um, now, maybe if this was Anthony Joshua, Lee, then you could say there's a conspiracy there because Joshua makes millions Possibly is going to be a, a billionaire it, before the Andy Ruiz fight. Before that, this kid's on the rise in the sport. Is the heavyweight champ? Um, there's people that would make moves for him. You you could say that, but not Dillian White. So he was cleared for a reason. I, I'm not going to say anything about him until the, the like they said that all the evidence comes out. And you're right, Lee. It's weird that two guys that are not affiliated with Al Heyman have come up and you know, so far, these bogus stories. Um, is that the WBC? Who's doing that? Who's the one that's getting these these bogus allegedly stories? Allegedly, the WBC. You know? Allegedly, the PBC. Allegedly, Deontay Wilder. I'll say it legally speaking, because 
this is a legal situation. No one ever talks about they lost $3 million in a court battle to uh, Povetkin, Alexander Povetkin, for, for right, running out of Russia. Shirt. He got a free he got a free ticket. He doesn't even have to fight anymore. He got paid. He got $3 million for them running out of Russia. Oh, he's dirty? Boom, they're on the first plane out of there. And they're like, hold on. No, he's not dirty. Who told you that? Oh, no, no, no. I got eyes and ears everywhere. Everywhere. Bam, gone. <laughs> Sued. <laughs> I know. Shit. I know everything. No, you don't. <laughs> and you he don't. lost that battle in America. Read you read TMZ, and I'm not even sure that Deontay is completely literate, allegedly. <laughs> so it's hard to say with Deontay what's going on in his brain. I'm sure in his mind, before he started drinking and getting a little crazy, before he cut the I got eyes and ears everywhere video. I mean, that's some. Cra- he and said, you know what? It, yeah, Lee, that could be the biggest step aside check we've ever seen written. Three million dollars in an escrow account that was sealed until that that judgment was given, and it was awarded to Pavetkin's team. That's a three million dollar check, so I didn't have to fight him. Yeah, most of the time completely- it's like six. Most times it's like 600K. <laughs> what a deal. What a deal. <laughs> what a deal for not even fighting. Uh, moving forward. Who's next? Uh, Julio Cesar Chavez uh, oh. Sr. got rubbed at gunpoint. Ring legend Julio Cesar Chavez uh, had reported on social media that he was robbed at gunpoint in Mexico City. Allow me to register my really... Somebody got robbed at gunpoint in Mexico City, Andrew. I am so shocked. Chavez said this, I've just been a victim of robbery, putting a gun to my head, taking my watch, my chain uh, from Jorge, his watch. There is no doubt that life can be lost in a second. We have to weep about the danger in Mexico City and be aware of motorcycles that go around it. Really? I would... Hold on. Can we talk about what he just said there, Andrew, for a split second before we go to the next paragraph? Did he just say that the biggest dangers in Mexico are getting shot in the head or run over by a motorcycle? Uh, no, I, I think that means, you know, most of these robberies are taking place with guys on motorcycles. Isn't that what he means? Are you sure? <sighs> Can't I just imagine that he's talking about getting shot in the head or run over by a motorcycle? <laughs> Which to me is equally funny. I want to clarify that not all motorcyclists are criminals. See, he's angry with motorcycles. But it's important to be aware of the motorcycles on which there are two people right. Yeah, he's he's going to back up your story here, Andrew. Yeah. But it's important to be aware that motorcyclists, uh, motorcycles on which there are two people riding because most of the time they're, they are the ones who assault people. There are good people in Mexico. Andrew, how so many basically, people... so basically, Lee, if you and your boy are thinking about riding a motorcycle in Mexico City, I wouldn't. It's okay to people. take a pot shot at him because they might be ripping you off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just pull out a gun and just pop the dude on the back of the bike. Now, you know what's sad about this, Mexico? I'm going to tell you. Would Ali get robbed in America? No. Well, no, he might right? get, back in the day... He got close to being hung and lynched a few times. No, he didn't. Will you stop? <laughs> you know, come on, you guys. This dude is the... No, Lee, Lee there's uh, there's actually... Muhammad Ali actually went to a KKK rally before. He he gave a speech at one, okay? So, no, he would he was not... It was close. inspirational. It increased it was... <laughs> pledge drives by, like, a couple hundred people. <laughs> I have no idea what they were doing, but they did what, it. So, what a softball. How did you, like, you lobbed that one over the plate and you didn't see that swing coming? Come hey, on. Um, yes. What the fuck, man? His brother gets murdered in a, ro- in a robbery, and now Probably he's getting robbed on the street. <laughs> you know, you know Sorry, listen, we my- knew this was coming. El Chapo's gone. He's now in a prison somewhere in the middle of America, never to be heard of again. And and they've lost everything. Their their power is it's gone. Not as safe with El Chapo gone, Andrew. Obviously, that's what Chavez is. I'll read oh, between God. the lines. Free yeah. Ch- Free Chapo. 
is really the message here. He needs. He's probably going to move out. I bet you. I bet you. He, he. I know he loves his country, but I don't know, man. It's getting scary over there for the Chavez family. Don't be surprised when his son gets messed up with something. Being, I, I don't know, married to El Chapo's uh, son's wife or dead son's wife, widow. Well, he uh, Chapo legally adopted Chavez Jr. as part of the transaction. That's, this is all the problem. This is all the problem. But yeah, a very sad day out there. We thought he was their greatest. Now he's getting guns put to his head on the street. Give me your watch, bitch. It's a good story, Andrew. I like where this is going because we're getting closer and closer, inching to today's featured story. And you know what? You got me. I thought the, I thought you were going to do this one. I, th- I was expecting to oh, hear no. mariachis and we're sirens. No. Come on, bro. <laughs> Not to mention, I now live at the beach with neighbors on either side of me. This is the kinder, gentler Lee. Oh, okay. Now. All right. I got a window right. open. I'm on the beach. I'm, I'm a relaxed guy now. Ay, ay, ay. But those filthy motorcyclists, Andrew, we got to put a stop to them. <laughs> Kubrat Pulev wants to fight Andy Ruiz. Uh, you remember Kubrat Pulev. Do I need to pull up the video at this moment? No. We Yes, he's... We yes. beat that horse into the ground? Yeah. <laughs> yeah the reason I bring this so. up... Oh, I beat this horse into the ground. In fact, I, I want to personally take credit for the fact that he got his license back. Yeah, right. Uh, thanks to Fight Net Radio. Can't even get a pizza. Wide stream the Kubrat Pulev, what I like to call the dirty dancing video, right after the incident, where Jenny Sushi Ravallo, I use her last name. Unlike most media sources that just say Sushi, that's not her last name. That's her nickname. Her actual name is Jennifer Ravallo who, from what I've done with my research personally, can never see that she has done anything media-related in her entire life in regards to boxing. Do I think she wants to be an Instagram model? Yes. Do I think she has anything to do with boxing, Andrew? No. No, I do not. We've both done it. We did the Google search live here. She was kissed inappropriately. I'll make it clear. It was an inappropriate kiss by Kubrat Pulev after his fight because he believed that they were friends, that they had some kind of relationship. Why would he think that? Well, previously she has cupped and fondled his uh, junk in a photo. She uh, apparently does lap dances for him and the team before and after the fight. We actually released that video But for some reason, Gloria Steinem had decided that this was an opportunity for the Me Too Too movement, which, Andrew, believe it or not, it was not. This is actually hurting the Me Too movement. Yeah. As soon as Um, that video dropped, it was all bad. It was all bad. Yeah. Uh, Remember, Lee? Remember, Lee, when we went back to her Instagram feed, she actually lost followers. She didn't gain. We... we, uh, we did better in that situation than she did, sad to say. Yeah, no doubt. <clears throat> Two weeks ago, Bob Arum did an interview with someone, ES News or one of those sources, and talked about Kubrat, which caused Gloria Steinem, and of course, Jennifer Ravallo, who now wears basically a burqa, Andrew. I think she wears as much clothing as possible every time she does a press conference which, by the way, was not how she was dressed on the night of the fight. And I realize that's not an excuse yeah. for being kissed inappropriately, Andrew. I'm making it clear so I don't get any hate mail. Right, right. I'm just telling you that the night I saw her, the boys were about to flop out of my face on press row. I'm just saying. <laughs> so they did another press conference pleading that Ku brought stay suspended because that actually helps their case when they file their civil suit, which still hasn't been filed. I'm thinking, I'm wondering if they think they can actually get away with getting a settlement without actually going to trial. Of course. Um, Of course. Seems logical to me from a legal standpoint. Uh, But just a couple of days ago, newly reinstated IBF number one rated heavyweight contender Kubrat the Cobra Pulev uh, and his team officially petitioned the IBF at requesting the order IBF heavyweight champion Andy Ruiz to postpone his rematch with Anthony Joshua and make an immediate mandatory defense with Pulev because he's the number one, Andrew, and now that he's unsuspended. All right, 
how great would it be to find out that Eddie Hearn is actually the guy behind Jenny? Think about this. <laughs> Hold on, everybody. I'm not crazy about this. I want to lay this out. So before he suspended Andrew, Kubrat Pulov is the number one IBF contender. He is the mandatory challenger to fight Anthony Joshua, who is then the IBF champion, correct? Yep. He is then suspended by the California Athletic. IBF jumps on him. Everybody jumps on him. Larry Steinan jumps on him. Everybody jumps on him. He's a horrible man. He's immediately removed from the rankings. In the interim, Andy Ruiz knocks out Anthony Joshua. What if this was all a plan by Eddie Hearn not to fight Kubra Pulov? Andrew, reaction. I don't know, Lee. You, you, you're thinking that Eddie Hearn was thinking he was going to get lose to Andy Ruiz, who was a replacement for Miller. No, I didn't think that he thought he was going to lose to Andy Ruiz. I think that he didn't want Anthony Joshua to fight Kubra Pulov. Yeah, that, that's who knows? pre. That's pre. Andy Ruiz. I I don't want to disagree. And then a year later, it comes out. It's true. <laughs> oh, my God. Could you imagine if she does a press conference? This was all set up by Mr. Eddie Hearn. Oh, so good. billion dollars can buy you a lot. Right? So he's back. He's calling out Andy Ruiz. He wants his shot or he wants him stripped, whatever the case. And since he's backed by Bob, the IBF is more than likely going to listen to him. Uh, he does have to fight a mandatory at some point, but I think he's tied up with Anthony Joshua for right now. So be it. Uh, he does have a pretty good case to get the IBF stripped and put around his waist. What does the future hold for Kubrat Pulev Andrew? Listen, I don't know how it plays out. I know someone's going to get either step aside money or a um, easy title eliminator. Like they'll put them in. They'll say, okay, pull Ev. Basically what they're doing to Wyatt, we'll have you fight this guy in our rankings. Uh, you'll get through it and then we'll still have you mandatory. And here's an extra check from Mr. Pulev himself uh, or from Andy Ruiz and Al Heyman himself. Um, because that's the only way they're going to get the fight through. Listen, it's so sad how many media members in boxing um, don't know the rules of these contracts. Or And I'm no lawyer. I don't know them. But I, I, we do know that there was a rematch clause in the fucking contract. So the rematch is happening. Andy Ruiz already knows what he's going to make. He already knows that it's guaranteed he's gonna, fighting him next. He also knows that Eddie Hearn has his next fight. Eddie Hearn has Andy Ruiz for three fights. So it's uh, it's just dumb how we keep going back and forth with this. You know, oh, Andy Ruiz, is not now he's not fighting Anthony Joshua. Now he's not going to the UK. Like, stop, man. Fuck, you guys know how this thing works? He already signed. It was on the first fucking contract that he signed. Um... Matter of fact, Andy Ruiz this week just tweeted out, Lee, no matter where it happens, the rematch will be another great fighter. So don't don't take my words that. But he said another – He basically, people, now he's not going, oh, I'm not going to the UK. It's going to be here or Mexico or I'm not fighting. Now, all of a sudden, wherever it happens, it's going to be a great fight. That's what he's tweeting out now. Because his lawyers called him. Somebody called him. Al Heyman called him. Hey, kid, relax. You already signed that contract on the first fight. Stop it. So no, Pulev is not fighting Ruiz next. Ruiz will be fighting Anthony Joshua later this year, most likely in the UK. Uh, this note just in, Kubra Pulev will be fighting Gloria Steinem in a no-holds-barred match. <laughs> Later this year. I wish Pulev would get like a Tyson Fury matchup. Do we have Tyson Fury in the news today, Lee? And if not, Tyson I'll just Fury go on it has been, No, we don't have him in the news cycle today. That is not our featured story. I know you okay. don't know what our featured story is, Andrew. But that is not our featured story. So real fast, they want him. They're saying Charles Martin is now a the, one of the final 
uh, opponents on the list, maybe fighting. T- Come on, that's garbage. Martin, are you serious right now? Like, it, that's so bad if Tyson Fury goes down that way. Just fight Pulev. He's a mandatory. He was top 10. I don't see why Tyson could, couldn't fight this guy if he's not going to fight uh, over Charles Martin. Sad fight. Go ahead, Lee. Take it from there. No, it's okay. Do you want to run down the heavyweights real quick and where they are? So Joshua's tied up with Ruiz. Mm-hmm. Kubrat's, uh in limbo. Tyson Fury is talking about fighting... Uh, What's his name? The uh, Jer- Jarrell Big Baby Miller, right? Yep. Amusingly, Chris Ariola is going to fight uh, Kaunaki so they can keep Kaunaki busy over at the PBC. My favorite cr- quote out of that press conference, Andrew, was by Chris Ariola, and I quote, if I don't win the heavyweight championship, my career will be a waste. The fact that he's still fighting for a champion or, you know, moving towards a championship, Andrew, <laughs> is mind boggling to me. Mind boggling. You no, know, Al Heyman, if Ruiz beats uh, Joshua in this rematch, Ariola Ruiz is probably one of the first fights they're going to do in, in L.A. All, all Ariola has to Well, do you're assuming win. that Ariola gets past Kaunaki. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Oh, Kaunaki. You know how long- you know how he's long good, Chris but he, Ariola's hey. been fighting, Andrew? He how didn't long? have a pancake face when he started boxing. His <laughs> face has become pancaked. I, I totally hear you, but Kaunaki is, is you know, he's still a very green himself. He's he's not your um, polished fighter, heavyweight boxer. I don't see that at all when I watch that kid fight. He, he fucking goes in there face first and throws a lot of punches. Um so Ariola will be able to hit him is what I guess what I'm trying to say. Ariola is taking a dive, bro. That is not the. I, face no, I don't of believe company. that. I don't believe that because I think Al Heyman sees a big fight there. If Andy Ruiz can get past, it can get this guy two wins. That Staples Center sold out. Sorry, Lee. Staples Center will be sold out. With Ruiz versus Ariola. You better damn well believe that. So no, I don't think Kalnaki. Kalnaki better not take that fight lightly. Just go in there and handle your business. You're younger, outpunch him, outwork him, but don't don't overlook him. Are you ready for our featured story? Uh oh, here we go. <clears throat> Very excited. I gotta. I almost feel like it needs it it needs like uh, some level of buildup. Almost, Andrew. Uh, I'm just being perfectly honest. Uh, first of all, go to fightnetradio.com. Check out all your needs. My name's Lee Hunters. The other guy is Andrew Lapache, Fight Net Radio. Andrew's the smart one. He's the writer. He cares. And I am the reason that you guys laugh every week at boxing. Because our featured story this week, the venue has been named for Chavez Jr.'s comeback. That's right, Andrew. <laughs> Our featured story is Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. And if you don't think I didn't pull up video to revisit his comeback videos, you would be completely wrong. <laughs> the long way to come back fight of the son of the legend. Is that what he's going by now? Son of the legend? Fuck. Really? That is, is so it, sad. Yeah, Wait, this let's is just like... stop right there. Let's take that one all in before we move forward on this press release, Andrew. His nickname now, son of the legend. And he's got 54 professional fights, 50 wins, and you could never get out of daddy's shadow. Mm. It's so fantastic, Andrew, that his new nickname is Son of the Legend. And notice that when Chavez Sr. Came out of Chavez not, Sr.'s I, dick is the biggest thing he's ever accomplished. Oh, so great. <laughs> Did you notice when Chavez Sr. was in Mexico, he wasn't with Chavez Jr.? He was with Jorge. <laughs> Was there a moment in Mexico and where he thought, why couldn't it have been who why couldn't it have been Junior? Why? <laughs> Damn you, you guys they better screwed return it up. that fucking shit, man. That was Chavez Senior, you assholes. What if Chavez oh Senior God. actually had here's my new conspiracy there theory, is Andrew? Not- a ghetto that Muhammad Ali would have walked in in America and been robbed. 
you dumbasses. Everybody, oh, whatever cartel is running those kids that did that, they should be slapped. I'm not going to say anything. They should be slapped, Lee, and go return that shit now. You know, Ch- uh, De La Hoya's, what was it? His, it was De La Hoya's family. I think his father or brother, someone got robbed in L.A. Yeah, they returned that shit. Oscar opened the door. It was on the doorstep. And they got a sorry yeah. note. Yeah. You don't, you, you, <laughs> Not Chavez Jr. I mean, uh. Senior. I get him confused. But <laughs> what if Chavez Sr. actually hired the mo- those dirty, filthy motorcyclists to take out Junior, who was still at the hotel at the time? That was the actual plan. So instead, they decided since they weren't going to get paid, they just robbed Jun- Senior. <laughs> It would actually be Junior probably whacking his dad. You know that. I think it's I, the other way around. I want to believe that <laughs> Senior is mad at Junior, like he's disappointed all the time. Oh, I don't even think he hangs around the guy. Seriously. <sighs> There's probably so no phone Andrew. calls there. Yeah, no, he, he's... <laughs> I'm waiting for Senior to start uh, marking out on a consistent basis for Junior's opponents. Saying they have a good chance of beating his son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so great. Uh, all right, let's let me try to get through this. The long way okay. to come back fight of son of the legend. I can't even get past that, Andrew. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. will take place August the 10th at Salon Diamante Premier in San Juan del Lagos, Jalisco, Mexico. Where, by the way, there will be filthy motorcyclists, Andrew. Uh, Chavez, who's now uh, 53 and 1 with 32 KOs, faces Evert Bravo, who's 25, 10 and 1 with 19 KOs, in his first fight since May 2017. That's right, Andrew, a legit two year layoff when he dropped a unanimous decision to Saul Canelo Alvarez in Las Vegas. Now at his natural weight of fat. <laughs> natural like weight of, one. he doesn't have to train that I just that inserted hard. that one for you. He's now at his natural weight of being fat. Right. right. Uh, super middleweight. Five foot dude who's a super middleweight. And new trainer, Ramulo Quintera. Chavez hopes to make a successful comeback campaign enabling him to win his second world championship in different divisions. Wait, Andrew, there's more. Julio Jr. I love this. This is just lazy writing. Julio Jr. Julio, who writes Julio Jr.? I've never even seen that printed in an art- article where somebody just wrote Julio Jr. Shame on fight news. Julio Jr. was the first Mexican to be crowned middleweight champion uh, when in June 2011, he Ooh. defeated undefeated German Sebastian Zibik for the Remember WBC when I, title. Last week when I talked about those, they might both have zeros. Doesn't mean they're in the same roster. Anyone heard yep. of the undefeated Sebastian Zibik since that fight? Maybe it's Zibik. <laughs> Zibik. Zibik, whatever. Never heard of him again, but go on, Lee. Two consonants together like that. My, my. For the WBC title. He was also part of the second Mexican father-son pair to be world champions after Espadas, uh, Guti, and Guti Jr. You know Chavez Jr. is going to be, as long as he outlives his dad, he'll be playing his dad's role all the way his whole life. You know, Andrew, when they're doing he those, is son of legend. Yeah, you know when they're doing those, uh, you know, Chavez, you got to remember them after they pass away or 50 years after their greatest fights and all that. He's going to be the one accepting all those awards and probably still Las Vegas. Uh, just son of the legend all the way to the grave. Not son of the son of. I think they need to remove the just son of legend. It rolls a little better. Yeah, yeah, yeah I hear you. Andrew, you know what I was thinking? I was thinking at this point, maybe we need to revisit Chavez. (laughs) The comeback. Here we go. Video is so good that we need to watch him again. There he is on the soccer field. Mm. Mm. 
Side running step. slowly in different directions. <laughs> it's still funny. I don't know why. This fucking guy. Sidestep. He's going to do a lot of sidesteps in his comeback. He's son of legend, Andrew. He's son of legend. <laughs> They're going to make a movie about him. He's so great. I could watch this on an endless loop with you. Just <laughs> literally coming up with new things to talk about. The fact that Oh, it's just so bad. But and it actually could be a movie, Son of Legend, how he never lived up to him. You know what I mean? You're absolutely right. This could be a movie one day. He just needs to have the fallout that you're saying. You know what I mean? The the drug. Well, he needs the meltdown, right? Like he needs yeah, to hold the bank up. Over. He needs yeah. to start shooting people from yeah, the then he like tower. turns in Yeah, then he turns into a movie star or something, and that'd be the movie, man. Boom. Oh yeah. No, like I want, I in my mind, desperately, I need Chavez to do something uh, critically stupid at this point, right? <laughs> like, really, I want him to snap. I think he would be better in the position of, you know, like, I, you know, before everybody gets on me about gun violence, but come on. If we, uh, if you heard in the news, Andrew, the Chavez Jr. was at some college in a bell tower shooting students, screaming, Daddy doesn't love me while he's picking off <laughs> students. Would you be surprised? That's kind of dark. I don't know. But reality, if that really happened. Okay, Chavez Jr. robs a bank. No, not surprised at all. Right? <laughs> Chavez Jr. allegedly kills 25 in mass homicide. I can you just know, keep I trying these out. I hate his logo too. Got to be perfectly honest. It's kind of a rip off of his dad's logo. This video is fantastic, Andrew. I wish he was chasing chickens around like a Rocky movie. So there was more of stuff for me to make fun of with him. But this video Maybe he is can be like Groot in the Spanish uh, version of the Marvels if Disney makes a <laughs> Spanish only Marvels Endgame. How did they let this video get out? And by the way, I'm not making this up. He's released this video twice, and he has gotten roasted both times in the comments, Andrew. Every time he puts this return video I out. You, the guy's kind of a nobody out there. He was a no one when he – Lee, he's always been the, the, the baby, right? The crybaby, the, you know, Chavez's son. No one liked him because he was Chavez's son. You know, basically – remember, Chavez didn't have a great – a uh, professional career either with some of the um, the fans out there, right? Chavez's ego is pretty big in the heyday. Running around with cartel bosses, you know, all the things he was mixed in, all the stories you hear about him. Shit, even De La Hoya has a story of Chavez partying the night before they fought, how he didn't take the fight serious. So Chavez Jr. really never had a shot coming up. Um, seriously, I heard stories of, of that he used to get booed in all the clubs that he would go into, even when he was undefeated. Um, so there's there's that side of being the prince also. Andrew, I don't want you to think that I'm a one trick pony with just one video. I did my homework this morning and I wish to expand upon the return. Are you ready? Yes. You should be excited because these are Here good go. videos. Let's start off with Chavez Jr. at 24 Hour Fitness. Like I think. Lot. Yeah, this, is that a secretary in the back? Yes, dude. <laughs> yes, it is. Who's uh, actually having her lunch? <laughs> has no idea who that is. So How great this is guy. this? This guy's so there fucking people walking weird. Around. He's in a hotel. <laughs> right i mean it's a nice hotel it looks like it could like well feet all out of position fucking just fucking up look he, at that he's in a hotel shooting video of himself doing nothing <laughs> shadow boxing matter with of fact receptionist who's eating lunch behind her I'm so upset with you, Boxing World. Why didn't this become a challenge of everyone just standing in front of a mirror doing nothing like Chavez oh Jr.? Oh, my gosh, the Chavez Jr. Jr. challenge? Yeah. I like the guy Boxing. who's, like, trying to change the station <laughs> in the background. <laughs> There's so much about this video. 
Where do I go? Why isn't there a floor in this? You guys weight suck. Room, in this that should have been room. a challenge, man. Chavez should have been eaten alive for this. Lee, this I mean, seriously, I haven't, I haven't ran in 12 years. I could do this video. You know, it's shit like that. Like, you're such I a I can shoot a 12-second video that would look better than this. I, you, that's what I mean. There should have That should have happened. <laughs> It's great, right? Then Chavez this is Sr. the find. This is a good find. <laughs> yes, it is. Look I mean, he man. looks I good. I nature. mean, certainly, you know, the the uh, Mexican cattle, Andrew, the clenbuterol, it served him very well. He's beefed up. He looks good. <laughs> Are you going to be surprised when he tests dirty? <laughs> Look at him. That's clearly the beefiest we've seen him. He's all, he's all, when you shoot up, this is all the exercise you have to do, people. <laughs> Why does he keep combing his hair with his left hand? He's not, I get that he's putting up the guard, but he's combing his hair. Watch, he's going to comb with his left hand, his hair. Coming up. Kills me every time. Coming up. There it is. What, what was that? I, I'm sure it was keep the guard up, but it sure looked like. He's running his oh, hair out of place. His hair. <laughs> Watch, it's coming up again. To the body, to this. Where is he punching too? He's punching off to the side. I don't even hair. Great video, right? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. But wait, Andrew. This would only make me a two-trick pony. I give you the last video for all of you to enjoy, and it's great and marvelous. Oh, we'll get you to work. Don't you worry. In a racquetball court, Andrew. In a racquetball court. Oh, fuck. Is he not the best? Yeah, he doesn't even have a gym anymore, huh? He's just fucking picking spots. He just goes down to the local double tree, works out there. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, uses the local racquetball court. I they play squash, I think. Who's filming them. I, would love I to had to think, based on how this dude looked originally from the back, I thought it was Chavez Sr. No, I don't think they hang out, bro. I think that relationship no, it's is Junior with his with his uh, pedal pushers on again. I don't, bro, pull your pants down. It's not a good look for him at all, Andrew. Not a good look at all. <sighs> I'm not gonna let this go. Look at this video, Andrew. It's unbelievable. Just all you gotta do is vision the fight, and that's it. That uh, at least he's punching in a straightforward direction. In the previous video, he was punching <laughs> well, to the to the left, <laughs> and at least he's not combing his hair this time. He's this making... time, he actually looks like better. Yeah, no, just all you gotta do is envision. I mean, the, the fact fight. that he's training on a squash court or a racquetball court is still the funniest part of his like, video, uh, right? Yeah. Because what it tells me is. Yeah. I don't have anywhere to train. Look, 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 duck. Oh, he just threw a punch. Oh, duck again. He just threw another punch. I'm so good. I'm so good. <laughs> what? I, can, I can just mind read what he's doing right now. He's the best, Andrew. <laughs> Come on, the camera's on. This is how you guys oh, should train. I gotta keep my arms look, moving. Duck, duck. Uh, uh. <laughs> Pump the jab. So Come on, kid. Yeah. You can do it. 15 <laughs> seconds left in the round. <laughs> Come this on, is kid. like what Good. children do in their living room, Lee. Daddy this, loves me. This Daddy is what I used to me. do when I was 12. Okay, maybe 18, but seriously. <laughs> Daddy loves me. Daddy loves me. Uh -uh. Daddy, Daddy loves me. me. Uh-oh, he threw a combo me. there. I was like four punches. Watch out. What? <sighs> Fucking pathetic. I don't know. I don't know. Daddy loves me. Mommy, why doesn't Daddy love me? Why did Daddy leave us? Mommy. On a serious note, not really. Boxers to duke it out on Celebrity Family Feud, Andrew. That's right. Tonight, if you're listening to this on the 20th. Yes, good uh, shit. So Maulers versus the Brawlers. Uh, we are joined by one of those contestants, Clarissa Shields, to tell us more about it. Hey. How's it going, Miss Shields? It's going good. Andre, Amir, <laughs> so, so Jay, how'd you do? Oh, there you go. Danny, Antonio Tarver, we can't understand him at all. Hey! Andre Berto, Michaela Mayer, didn't I beat her? 
and Josecito Lopez. Hey! You gonna watch? I gotta watch, yeah, no doubt. Yes, I am. Okay, who do you think will be the toughest to understand? Oh, fuck, James Tony. You nailed that one. Lights out, baby. Lights out all day. Lights out, man. All I want him to do is keep saying lights out. Lights out, baby. Lights out all day. <laughs> Like I don't, I don't even care what the question is. I don't, I don't care what the question is on Family Feud. I just want him to say "lights out, baby, lights out all day." That, that will be, be the funniest thing classic, ever, yeah. ever. Like every response. Top ten answers, points are tripled. Next person's going to the round to, you know, pay for the charity. James Tony. Name something people put on their toothbrush every morning. Lights out, baby. Lights out all day. <laughs> and here's my second question. Is it going to be the regular host of Family Feud? Is it going to be, um, what's his name? I knew you were going to fucking do that. I watch the guy every day and night. What is his name? Come on, Lee. I don't know. That's why I went to you because I'm oh, proud of him. That's a joke. You just got a I new radio show. show too. I watch yeah, the show every night. You do? Yeah. Yes. I just watch the fail videos. No, my, my she loves Family Feud. Let me ask. Gosh darn it, babe. Family Feud. What? Who's the guy that runs it? Come on, I can do this before she finds Steve out. Steve Harvey. Jesus. Steve oh, Harvey. My. I knew Steve. that. I know. Fuck, man. I've watched the show every night. He's funny I, watch as shit. Video. I watch Steve Harvey fail videos like a mental patient and think oh, this the is going to be classic. You know what? James Tony, I wish he did something like that. He would instantly right? like, he doesn't be right actually have an it. answer. It's just lights out, baby. Lights out, lights man. out all day. <laughs> because everything else out of James Tony's mouth, believe it or not, hey. is mumble, 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 they, mumble, they mumble, want mumble, the mumble. they want the answer so fast you know <laughs> you know what i mean shit last night some girl was like because my butt dies or something and steve just looks at her like what did you just say but they want those answers so fast you get oh, that so fantastic <clears throat> i think we have a photo of it from our andre Facebook ward's account. gonna be given that yeah, look like andre ward's gonna be given that look like he doesn't belong there i'm greater than everyone <laughs> <laughs> he does look like he's greater than everybody oh, and yeah. he's two feet taller than everybody except Larissa <laughs> Shields hair Andre Ward always has that look when he sits up there with Timothy Bradley like I can't believe this guy's even talking right now <laughs> I feel like it's uh, from like Sesame Street which of these fighters is not like the other <laughs> hey, Andre. Who, hey who, who do you have Brad? money on wait a minute right now people Lee, serious question. Who do you have money on that's going to get that eh, eh, at least three times because they can't think of an answer? James Tony. <laughs> that's so fucked James up. Tony. Tony. Hey, it could be Danny okay, Garcia. Okay, let's go down. Let's, okay, Danny okay, Garcia. Let's, let's, let's be honest. <laughs> Danny will have dumb ass. I, I'll, I'll call it out. Josecito's intelligent. <laughs> Michaela's intelligent. Danny is dumb as rocks. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that Berto, corner of yeah, doom over there on the brawlers. Berto might get buzzard, man. Andre Berto might be okay. It's going to be close. These are going to be soft balls. I want to believe Antonio Tarver is the weakest link and the dumbest link in this pile. And he just says stupid things to try to put himself over. I knocked out Roy. So he can stay relevant. Y'all see man, look at the Roy, right? murderer's row of dumb on the Maulers. Outside of Andre Ward, you are looking at a collection of dumb humans, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, will you stop? I don't know if they're that bad. You better watch out, James Tony. You like <laughs> Okay, here's what I would like in my ideal fantasy land, Andrew. James Tony says nothing but lights out, baby, lights out all day. Amir Khan. Every time he's asked a question, my wife didn't do it. My m wife didn't sleep with another man. That's all he says. <laughs> Andre Ward plays the role of shaking his head and going, I can't believe I did this even for charity. <laughs> Larissa Shields just keeps saying, hey. Right? You know, when they tell him to introduce themselves, you think Amir Khan's going to go, I'm the guy that said Anthony Joshua slept with my wife. She didn't, though. She didn't. 
It's hilarious. <laughs> this is so funny. And then she got pregnant. And then they announced a pregnancy like three weeks later. <laughs> Told you the worst. The worst tweet that dude ever did was when he said that. And then your wife said, I'm pregnant, dumbass. Now go tweet that out, fuck face. <laughs> uh, wouldn't it be great if they did all their stereotypes? Danny just talks about Mikey. I mean... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, there's so many things that would be great that aren't. No, we have to watch. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to actually try, and they probably edited the show so that they all look pretty good. You, Lee, that's what I wanted to tell you. I didn't want to keep cutting you. You know they got to be doing softballs tonight, right? Yes. You know, it, uh. Things you put in a glass. Yeah. 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 Ex- exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Top 10 answers. Name something you eat for breakfast. P- <laughs> what? That's what you got. Hey, people, let me tell you, if, if it's as good as me and Lee think, hopes, it's going to be, uh, we might do a show just on their answers. Oh, no, we got to do a watch serious. along. There's yeah, a oh, watch I'm... along coming for the family feud. Yeah, I'm fucking, yes. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. That, that will be coming out as the midweek show. <laughs> family feud watch along oh so great steve harvey's gonna be like these motherfuckers they ain't saying shit do you got an answer there's <laughs> gotta be an outtake reel somewhere <laughs> right notice they're not doing jeopardy bro they're not doing jeopardy no you and you you gave the perfect answer uh you what <laughs> name some things you eat for top breakfast. 10 people surveyed you're such name a dick something you you're take to the beach you're such a dick. <laughs> clothes? No. Not clothes, James. You don't you put on clothes to go to the beach, James. Clothes. Your one the quite one of the questions yesterday was uh you you're on the first date, he takes you to a strip club. What do you do on the second date? Yeah, that one would work. I mean, but that's the one they're gonna whip out on Michaela and she's gonna look in you know, probably throw up a girl power hashtag me too movement. <laughs> <sighs> so good. It's so good. I'm so excited. Do you already have it marked on your calendar? I, I'm doing it now. We're definitely watching, bro. DVR Seriously. Central. Yep. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. I'm going to be on. Hey, I'll be on the chat room too, you guys. Definitely. So tune in to Fight Net Radio for Andrew and I's watch along that will happen on Wednesday. I don't know how I'm going to make it work so that we can do it, but I'm going to do it. It has to happen. Lastly, we'll end on a solemn note because Andrew started this uh, last week. I want to believe that Andrew started this, but whatever the case. Yeah. Uh, Maxim Dadashev uh, has a GoFundMe page. Uh, for those of you who live under a rock, he died as a result of injury suffered in the ring a couple of weeks ago. A week ago, forgive me. Uh, so I believe it was top rank that put this together. The top rank family. This is actually the press release, Andrew top rank mourns the passing of Maxim Dadashev. Maxim was a talented fighter inside the ring and a loving husband and father outside the ring. Our thoughts and prayers are with him. Top rank has been in close contact with the Dadashev family throughout and made direct donations and support as the boxing sports and larger, uh, community joined together to honor the memory of Max. Today, we launched the official public fundraising campaign to provide. Do you think somebody from Top Rank is listening to this show? I might have I to. Don't, I, I have no idea, off. but I have no idea, but that's why I shared it because it was made by Top Rank. So I, I'm sure this money will be getting um, over to, to uh, his family. All right, Andrew. It's that point in the show where we wrap it up anyway, but. I think this is an opportunity for you to do a fever pitch for people to go to GoFundMe forward slash Matt. Oh, really? Mad Max Dadashev. You had to put his nickname in. That's what it was called. Yeah. All right. Uh, So it's GoFundMe, Mad Max Dadashev. Andrew, do it like you did it last week. Pitch for everybody to to give money. Uh, And for those of you who don't know, Andrew actually gave money from Fight Net Radio. You got to step up, Lee. When you when you call for it, 
they responded or maybe it was there already guys i don't i don't really know it popped up on my feed the next day so i responded um when you look at what people give it really is a nice nice thing um some don't have a lot but they're still giving something to his family if we all came together it would help her and the son ease their pain of of what their dad had did for them to on you know for them to get this this money um so yeah i'm i'm happy top rank did this i hope this is something that catches on with fighters that die on tv in front of us like this like i said people we can't do this for every single casualty in the sport understand that but but the ones that die on national television um big fights you know things like you know it's it's uh this this was very cool this is very cool that we can reach out and help them like this nowadays um i would have been doing this if they would have done this a long time ago um so go anything helps and you know what's cool is you see so many fighters that came and responded to this when you go and look at the donations um just very very cool thoughts and FightNetRadio.com with Andrew and Lee talking boxing, combat, sports, comedy, football, and everything kick ass. All on FightNetRadio.com. FightNet!